Hey, it's Chris, and today I wanna to help you figure out how to organize the apps on your iPhone and iPad home screen. So I have six different techniques that I wanna show you and give you some feedback on. They're all really unique and creative and different. And then if you wanna use any of those, cool, but at least you'll probably end up with some ideas that you can do whatever you want with. Specifically, we're gonna look at using invisible icons to position your apps anywhere you want. We're gonna go ultra minimal using just one folder for everything. We're gonna organize by color. We're gonna use the popular edge folders method. We're gonna go alphabetical. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you something that might really surprise you. The reason that I'm shooting this video right now is because it was rumored that Apple was gonna redo the home screen experience for iOS 12, but it looks like that might be delayed until 2019. So if you have to potentially live with this for one more year, I figured you might as well get the most out of it. Before we get any further, I'm giving away $100 worth of iTunes gift cards. The link for that is down in the description if you wanna get entered. Also, I found some cool new iPhone accessories and I linked those up down in the description as well. So be sure to check all that stuff out. So let me start this video off by just showing you what I've been doing in terms of organizing apps over the last few months, which is a variation of the edge folder method, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. So I just have four folders at the top of my screen with some of the most used apps underneath. And as you can see, I like to leave a row at the bottom free so I have at least some breathing room and things feel a little bit less cluttered. So that's what I've been doing, but at the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know if I'm switching to any of these other methods that are featured in this video, but I would really love to know how you organize your iPhone and iPad home screens. So leave me a comment and let me know. Now here's a tip for you. If you've got an iPad Pro and you need a place to stash your Apple Pencil, you might be interested in today's sponsor, Zugu Case. There's a lot to like about this case, including a robust bumper for major drop protection, a cover with sleep and wake functionality, a magnetic kickstand with eight different viewing angles, and perhaps my favorite part, the built-in Apple Pencil storage. So I'm gonna to refer to this first method as the invisible icon method, and I'll be using a site called Makeover, which is spelled a little bit different than it sounds, so I'll link it up down below, but it lets me place app icons anywhere I want to on the home screen, kind of like what you can do with Android. Then you can shuffle those icons around and end up with a really interesting arrangement that might make your friends think that you jailbroke your phone. I think the coolest thing about this method is just how creative you can get. So one of the examples was a picture of Big Ben with the clock icon set as the clock face or the watch face, and that was pretty cool. The worst part about this method is that it's kind of time consuming. The instructions are really clear, but still, you gotta be pretty motivated to make this happen. I gotta say, using this method is definitely kind of weird. It's almost like being in the twilight zone because it almost feels like you're not even using an iPhone. It takes a while to get used to. And right now is a good time to say, cue the Android jokes. So next up, let's go down the ultra minimal route and see what it looks like to use just one folder for every single app. I think the best way to tackle this setup is to put your nine most used apps in the front of the folder and then organize backwards from there, working your way back to the least used apps. The thing to keep in mind here is that it's less about knowing where every app is and more about clearing up some room and enjoying your wallpaper more because you can just use spotlight search to get to whatever you need very quickly. Personally, I kind of find this method sort of appealing, but I actually like a variation of it better where you've got one folder and three apps out so the whole dock is full. What I really like about this ultra minimal setup is that I feel a lot more focused. I'm not bombarded or overloaded with a bunch of different apps and choices. Instead, you have to know ahead of time, probably because you need to do something, what app you're gonna interact with and then go find it. The next setup we're gonna check out is arranging all your apps by colors, which originally sounded like the dumbest thing in the world to me, but wow, it's actually really satisfying once it's all set up. Visually, it's just super appealing. So you can do this in any order you want, obviously, but if you're looking for a recommendation, you might wanna do red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, and then you could decide where you want the whites and blacks to go after that. An alternative method that I've seen floating around is to put all the different colors inside of folders, which is interesting, but personally, I don't think it looks quite as cool. The thing about this setup is that, yes, it's visually stunning, but it's not actually all that useful. So there's no productivity boost here. In fact, there's kind of a randomness, there is a randomness, to the apps that are shown in front of your face at any given time. So I guess here, if you liked how it looked, you could just always use the spotlight search to figure out what you're doing, which really isn't all that different than the really ultra minimal thing. <laughs> now the edge folders method has proven to be pretty popular over the last few years, and I think people like it because it seems like it's thinking outside the box at first glance. Because the default is, if you create a bunch of folders, then iOS just sort of stacks them all horizontally. In this setup, people either put all their folders along the left or the right side of the screen and then fill in the rest of the space with their most used apps or put apps related to the folders in the same row. Like you can put all your camera and photo editing stuff in a folder and then pull out your top three most used and finish out your row. 
Alternatively, you could do like I've been doing and just have a row of folders at the top of the screen with all the apps that you use most closest to your thumb, or you could place a row of folders at the bottom or in the dock. I have to admit, there's some visual appeal to this technique, and it feels pretty organized while at the same time giving you quick access to your most used apps. Next up, and I'll admit this right away, this is my least favorite thing ever, and it's arranging your apps alphabetically. Again, kind of like arranging things by color, this method is just something you do because you want to. I mean, yeah, you could technically find stuff based on the name, but wouldn't it just be easier to just search? I'm just gonna say, this is a really bad idea. Don't do it. The only reason that it should be done is as a prank to somebody. I did it to satisfy your curiosity so you at least know what it looks like, but nah, that's the end of it. Now, before I tell you which method I'm gonna go with from here on out after making this video, there's one more method that you should consider, and that is the default app layout. I'm guessing a lot of people didn't know that you can reset your phone's home screen layout to make it look like it did when your phone was new. So all you have to do to get this going is go to settings, general, reset, reset home screen layout. Like think about when you're setting up a new phone. You can either import all your settings and apps from an old phone or you can just choose to start over from scratch. And there's something fresh and nice and fun about just redoing everything. So even if you didn't get a brand new phone, you can still have that same experience and kind of like start over and see where it leads. So you might be wondering what method I'm gonna be going with after testing out all these different techniques. I gotta say, I'm really torn between the ultra minimal, the colorful setup and just what I was doing before. I really can't decide. I might lean towards just doing what I was doing before, but I don't know, I don't know. I might spend some time with that ultra minimal setup. But then again, the colorful setup would look really good on camera, so I don't know. I can say this though, whatever my home screen looks like right now, it's not gonna look like that in like a week or two because I can't stand to not constantly rearrange things and tweak things and change things. That's just how I do it. So thanks for watching today, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure to go check out that giveaway. If you want to enter, there's multiple gift cards to win. Check out those accessories that I linked up. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.